Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, what? Corruption in Pennsylvania state government? No way, no how. But first, let's take a look at Older Americans Month. What you might want to do when you get up into that older age. We'll be back with all of that in a moment. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, we have a very interesting show this week, as I think we often do. We're going to get into a bunch of, well, there's some corruption in state government. At least we had some corruption. We'll get into that with a couple of the state's leading reporters. But look, we have the fourth oldest population Pennsylvania does in the country. As we age, there are all kinds of considerations that we all should make when we're starting to plan for the elderly years. Joining me to talk about that is Russell McDade. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. Russ, as always, thanks for coming on the program. And thank you for having me, Terry. This it's is exciting a, to be here. I mean, I, this is something I don't think we plan enough for. We don't think enough for. All of a sudden, you know, we go from 35, 40, we're in the 50s and 60s, and we've got to make these decisions. In some cases, we've got to make them for our parents and our grandparents, right? Well, that's right. And as you said, today, in May is Older Americans Month. And we're really, it's an exciting yeah. month for me. And next week is actually within Older Americans Month, month Nursing Home Week, right. where we take a week, we focus on the good work that our nursing facilities do right. for the elders who need their care. And within that week, it's Nurses Week. Oh my and gosh. as we know, I mean, nurses are, <laughs> nurses are the unsung heroes yeah. of the care continuum. And every day, those dedicated women and men, they, they do emotionally demanding jobs. Yeah. They're physically demanding jobs. Uh, job, and, and it's a very difficult environment to work in. And they're heroes. Each yeah. and every day in Pennsylvania, 30,000 of them are doing that job. Wow. All right. Let's start. Let's start with this. As we... You know, middle age, I, I, I don't know, I don't know at what age you should start planning, certainly by middle age. You've got to think about steps that you should take as you get, you know, you get into those golden years, you're ready to retire. Do you need an, uh, a, a facility? Can it be done at home? I mean, there's all kinds of options. Talk a little bit about what steps people should take. Yeah, the first thing people have to do, Terry, is get educated. And, you know, we find it would be great if we all planned. I should be planning now. We all should be planning now. The reality is, uh, you know, this is something that you don't want to call upon until the need arises. When that need arises, yeah. you have to educate yourself. Um, we have put up a website, actually. Our association has a website, www.paforqualitycare.org. Yep, Dot org, and that website can help families navigate and access the information they need to make informed choices about whether they need long-term mm -hmm. care, and if they do, what settings right for them. And it also can help them actually look through the options at individual facilities so that they can find out what's available in their region um, or mm -hmm. potentially near a son mm -hmm. or daughter, which sometimes people yeah. make the choice that they're <clears> going <throat> to go receive care near a son or daughter instead That's of That's an important their point that, we, that people don't often think about. I mean, the, gra the grandparents parents or the parents could live, you know, a distance away and they're doing the planning and you got the kids, where are the kids and how are they going to get to see them on a fairly regular basis? That's, that's important. I don't know that because lots of folks, live, you know, we have very mobile America here, right? Well, that's right. That's, that's, that's very prevalent these days. I mean, now we'll find, you know, a mother or father who they moved to Florida in their 60s <laughs> or 70s. They want to come home to their, ho to their home that they've lived in all their lives. Now the son moved to Chicago, the daughter's in oh LA. My. The local supports they don't have. Right. And so putting all that back together, you're right, with yeah. our mobile society is, is, is critically important. And we always tell people the single most important thing they can do uh, when they're trying to make that decision for a loved one is take some visits walk in the front door of a facility, right. walk in the front door of whatever setting you're looking to do. Um, if it's a nursing facility, go knock on the door, see the administrator, see the admissions mm -hmm. director, and ask some questions. And ask some questions of the residents and family who, families yeah, who are receiving care right Is down. there an age, or is it just, is there an age you should probably start to think about this? Is this the 50s? I mean, 
I don't know quite how long. I mean, when we talk about savings, you know, we're supposed to invest. Literally, we get out of high yeah. school or college, we're supposed to put money in some kind of savings account, you know, lifelong. That's right. Is there an age or does it vary, you think? Yeah, well, you actually, I mean, you can never start early enough, probably. Yeah, but the reality is right. none of us do. I mean, they, you know, they dangle that long-term care insurance right. policy in front of you in your 40s, like I am right now. And it's relatively cheap. And you say, well, yeah, but why would I buy that? I'm not going to need it. Then by the time you need it in your 70s and 80s, it might be unattainable because it's so costly because it's no longer insurance. Uh, it's about paying for care. And so you really have to plan early. Uh, and that's kind of getting into some of the things yeah. we'll talk about next, I think. Yeah. Um, that, you know, when you haven't planned early then, how can we ensure that our government payers are stepping up to the plate and making sure that there's a high quality care and services framework there for our seniors? Hold that thought because we're at a break and that'll be great. We'll take that up in the next segment and we'll be back after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, now celebrating 100 years as the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association and Partners for Public Education, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Russ McDay joins me. We're chatting about those golden years, how you should plan for, well, if you would need, to, need to go into a facility, how should you deal with it? What steps should you take? Russ is uh, an expert on that. He heads the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. All right, so we're at this point, as we discussed just before the break, where, where, where do you get the help? Right. Who's, go, who's there to help? <laughs> Answer that question. Who's there? How, how does that all work? Well, I tell you what, and. Pennsylvania's nursing homes have stepped up to the challenge. They've risen to the challenge for the 50 years since the federal Medicaid and Medicare programs came into mm -hmm. being, Terry. And at this point in time, I've been involved for all 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, <laughs> they, they are in as difficult a financial situation as they ever have been. And so they're there to help. They're providing high quality care each and every day. And you know the challenges that they face and that we are trying to help them navigate you know, moving forward, is how do we ensure uh, that our major government payers, and as you know, Medicaid in the state pays for over two-thirds of, right. of the days of care that are provided in our nursing facilities, how do we ensure that they put adequate resources on the table so that our quality of care continues to be high and so that Pennsylvanians have access to nursing facility care and other care that they need in their hometown, not now, having to travel hours to get to it. Now, we hear a lot about budget cuts and, you know, what's been going on with the federal government. Obviously, Medicaid is a shared program between the state and the federal government. Has the Medicaid funding to nursing homes been curtailed, been cut over the last couple of years, or has it increased but not enough to help, you know, to really get to the root of the of the problem? A little bit of both. I'll give you an example. The year before last, we saw a little under a 2% increase, mm -hmm. but inflation was going up by more than that. Last year, we saw flat funding, so it didn't go down, right. uh, but there was no increase in funding at all. In this year's budget, Governor Wolf's proposed a 1% increase. Again, we're, we're thankful and grateful for any increase. <laughs> any additional money in this fiscal environment is helpful. However, their costs are rising at 2 3 4%, depending on the region every year. Mm -hmm. And that's before you even start to do things like investing in infrastructure that may be 40 or 50 years old in the building, yeah. uh, investing in your staff, investing in benefits. All right, before I let you go, is there anything in the, anything legislatively that you would you think that would be helpful at this point? Well, I tell you uh, what, a big yes, a, a big issue that's out there in front of us right now um, in Pennsylvania is Senate Bill 747, and that deals with meaningful tort reform. Uh, in Pennsylvania, under the MCARE Act in 2002, we recognized that physicians were leaving our state 
because of the, uh, the legal climate and the tort climate in the Commonwealth. And they enacted caps on punitive damages for physicians, um, which leveled the playing field for right. them. And we saw our physicians benefit from that. That's been in effect for almost 15 years. And there's a bill that's in front of the state house right now that would give the same type of predictability right. to, to nurse. our nursing facilities right. so that the tort climate wouldn't be forcing many of them. We've mm -hmm. already had one major company leave the state as a result of predatory out-of-state law firms who've come into Pennsylvania trolling for dollars and for jackpot mm -hmm. settlements. Well, look, I want to thank you for coming in. This is, and you'll keep us posted as, as we move through. Of course, we've got the budget coming up. We'll see, maybe we'll get into, I can't believe we're going to talk about another state budget since the last one. The final aspect of it just got adopted the so-called fiscal code i won't even go there to try to explain that i'm not i don't think i understand it at any rate thanks for coming in all right coming up two of the state's leading reporters angela columbus and steve essick we're going to get into a couple of things i think you might want to stay around to listen to we'll be back this broadcast of pennsylvania newsmakers is brought to you by the pennsylvania credit union association Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania, and by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, representing companies involved in America's most affordable, reliable energy source. To learn more, visit betterwithcoal.com. Welcome back. Well, it wouldn't be a Pennsylvania Newsmakers show if we didn't talk about the state budget. How many times over the last couple of years have we talked about it? The legislature is back. We have some other corruption in Pennsylvania state government. Don't believe it. When we're back, here's Steve Essick with the Allentown Morning Call and Angela Columbus with the Philadelphia Inquirer, two of the state's leading reporters. Angela, let me start with you. All right, the legislature's back. And what's number one on the agenda as we push into the June 30, the budget right. deadline? The budget? Well, the budget, in theory, the problem is that nothing really has changed since the uh, last year when there was a major impasse with mm -hmm. the budget. People still hold uh, the positions that they held at the time. The go Governor Wolf has said that we need uh, to generate more revenue, probably through a, a, a major tax increase. Right. You can't get around that. Um, and the Republicans who control the legislature have said they don't want a, a tax yeah. increase this year. And it's an election year. Yeah, that's a great point. So, and I believe it was an AP story that said that it has been decades. The last time there was a major tax increase during an election year was decades ago. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a major tax hike, 2003, 1991, 1983, 1977. They have one thing in common, Steve Essick. They're in odd-numbered mm -hmm. years, right? Yeah, and, and Governor Wolf still couldn't get one done last year in an right. odd-numbered year. In an odd year, number, yeah. Which, technically speaking, <clears throat> probably would have made everyone's life easier. But then, then again, you, you get into the whole politics of, of, of everything. If Governor Wolf mm -hmm. got some revenue in his first year, the rest of his years arguably right. would be a cakewalk. Right. So yeah. the Republicans in the legislature, the theory goes, didn't want to give him a cakewalk. You know, that that's why the so-called framework deal blew up in December, where you had Republicans in the House voting against arguably what was probably the the finest the com right. compromise yeah. on a right. pension reform bill that's out there. The the sole reason they did that, these are so many of the same people who 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 supported that con the concept of that bill when it was advanced by one of their own members. Mm -hmm. So um, what happens next, I'm not sure. Now that, go ahead. Yeah, Becky. I think there's a, a different pressure point this year. Uh, we also have the DNC coming to Philadelphia in July. Do you really want to have the state without a budget oh. in the middle of that? That has uh, not, hold on, yeah, I'm going to interrupt. Yeah. That has not been mentioned before. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you're bringing it up. That's a good National point. National yeah. Democratic Convention right. meets in Philly in the last week in July. That's less than a month. Right. 
after the right. budget, the constitutional deadline of June 30 right. to pass a budget. Go ahead, I interrupted you. Well, uh, I mean, the, we know from having covered so many budget impasses mm -hmm. over the last, you know, several years through Rendell and um, a little bit in Corbett, it only went over a couple of days, sure. but certainly with Wolf that the the repercussions of not having an on-time budget don't kick in immediately. However, the headlines are terrible. Mm -hmm. um, schools, I believe, this year will start complaining much earlier about yeah. the potential impact on them because we did see that schools had to take out loans to uh, their aid was um, cut off because of the budget impasse, right. so they had to take out loans and they accrued interest on those loans. And they've already started making the point, I mean, and, and it's May, um, that they cannot function again with yeah. a major impact. And they yeah. just got their money. I just read where they yeah. got their money and there was a debate about who, you know, what, what was, go what, how the allocation worked. The governor wanted to spend the money one way, the legislature prevailed, right, and now they're yeah. using... Mm -hmm. A, a formula produced by a commission. Go ahead, take yeah, it away. Yeah, and was just like um, <clears throat> the 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 formula done by the the commission. Everyone seemed to agree was the right thing to do. It was it finally supposedly took politics out of the equation. Right. Governor Wolf wanted to use a hybrid of that to to give more money to school districts like Philadelphia or Pittsburgh that right. were really hit hard under the Tom Corbett years because he cut the state's charter school subsidy. Right. So the uh, lawmakers cried foul because the formula Wolf wanted to use would give more money to Philadelphia and therefore uh, a smaller percentage of the increase went to like most of the other school districts in the state. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, I mean, it seems like almost every month, I'm exaggerating a bit, I, I have folks like you on who cover state politics to talk about another episode of corruption and this Past week, we've had another episode involving a chief of staff of, a, of Governor Rendell. We'll get into that and explore where all that goes after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, advancing quality, improving lives. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Business Council and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation. Angela Columbus and Steve Essick join me. They're reporters. They cover state politics, state government. Hey, before we get into this corruption situation, I just remembered something I was, we were talking at the break. In God we trust. Steve Essick, what's that all about? In God we trust. In, in, in God we trust is, is, is a bill that originated in the House probably two, three years ago in which um, some Republican lawmakers want to give school boards the option of posting somewhere in their school building the phrase in God we trust. It is up to the local school boards whether they want to do that. They could put it up in a small plaque. They could I put a it. dollar bill up on the wall. They could mm -hmm. build a a Mount Rushmore type of uh, <laughs> monument to it if they want. And that bill has passed in the last couple of years. Uh, it passed the House and then it dies in the Senate. But do, mm -hmm. it, does it look like it's going to pass now? Oh, it's already passed the it's already passed the House. I know, but I mean Senate. the Senate. I don't think so. I you mean, don't. I, no, I, I I think the Senate realizes that it's it's embarrassing. I mean, re you have a budget. They couldn't do the budget last time around. Oh, I get your And point. so the House has these the these feel good things on in God we trust that they're only feel good for certain people. But the argument is that that would unify people. It would be a unify. At least that's what. Well, I mean. I don't know. It's, is, is it a unifying thing if, if, if you don't believe in, in God? We, we've had some major uh, federal lawsuits so you, in, I get in, it. So in you Pennsylvania, think it's just, locally, I get here it. in Dover School District, yeah, over right. God in, issues in, in, in schools. Dolphin County. All right. Okay. Uh, here we go. I'm going to let you get into this. I mean, it seems like every month Angela right. Columbus is writing a story <laughs> about, about corruption. Now we have a former chief of staff, not an, a, an uninfluential player, right in state government over the course of, of uh, more than a decade. Right. 
and you know, t take it. What, what right. did he do? What? Well, last week, uh, the uh, middle dis the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Middle District here in Harrisburg announced that John Esty, the former Chief of Staff to Governor Rendell, a big-time, well-connected Philadelphia lawyer, a top official at the Hershey Trust Company, uh, general counsel there, um, is going to plead guilty to a wire fraud charge that stems back to 2011. Um, that is essentially the feds created a fake company and they stung John Esty. Mm -hmm. And they uh, approached him, they hired him as a lobbyist because at that point he was no longer working for Rendell. And they clearly wanted something out of the legislature. And um, John Esty gave him the advice that if they wanted anything out of the legislature, Put they the had money to on give the table. money, right, yeah. campaign donations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I find fascinating is, is we appear to have two separate law enforcement agencies at roughly the same time right. kind of doing overlapping ab scam like things you had the attorney general's office set up yeah, a this, fake right. undercover lobbyist you have the feds setting up a company with, with a lobbyist so right. what does that say about our legislature our state government that you have this you so have before you yeah. go right. on i want to get this straight i want to get this straight so SD is charged with giving money to lawmakers for favors. Does that go ahead? Uh, correct acting me. as a pass through mm -hmm. for corporate pass money through. Yeah. Okay. for corporate money, which is banned under state campaign uh, finance laws. Um, okay. So this company, fake company, gives him twenty thousand dollars. Now here's the fun part about it: we don't know who this company is. The feds did not name, the federal authorities did not name the, the company, did not say what the company did. Gives uh, Mr. Esty $20,000. And what's he do with and it? And he gives, sev it looks like he apparently gave 7000 of that money and kept $13,000 Who did he give himself. the 7000 to? Well, the problem is that the campaign donations don't really line up very neatly with the I time get. frame. So but we, he in gave, the, mm -hmm. we think it's a campaign contribution to lawmakers. Yes. And, and, and is that in turn for, a fa for favors on the legislation? Well, is that the charge? It doesn't really sp detail that, but mm -hmm. that is, d yes, that <laughs> Steve's is. Steve's chuckling over there. it yeah. seems like. Yeah, I mean, and he it, kept some of the money. And he right. kept some of it. He pocketed. How do you it. make this up? I mean, well, that, 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 that's the thing. If you talk to people in the Capitol, they, they always say John Esty was extremely smart, extremely well off financially. Right. Yeah, you know, why? he made a ton of money at the right. Hershey Trust. And w what else is there besides what? Why would he give all that up for thirteen grand? There's got to be something else there. Does this go before well, we get? We're, mm -hmm. we're running out of time. Does yeah. this go anywhere with lawmakers? That's the question. Well, we don't we know. We've reported that John Esty uh, began cooperating with federal authorities, mm -hmm. uh. and apparently has been doing so for years. So my my sense is, stay tuned. So in other words, what we're looking at is there, potentially there could be problems for lawmakers. And we had that problem, we don't have time to get into it, with another right. uh, a state official, in this case the state treasurer, yes. Rob McCord, right? Well, right, and, and I, I, I think there's, there's a difference here. You have illegal corruption, which is the Rob McCord stuff where he's heard verbally oh, threatening. Legal? We're out of Yeah, there you go, yeah. but that's what it. it is. All right, yeah. <laughs> I think I understand this. At any rate, we'll be back next week for another edition of mm -hmm. Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.